fellow homo sapiens, and welcome back to Wenu, your weekly universal news and updates. Even though that pretty much sums up what my videos are, I'll tell you again anyways. I make weekly edits of all the changes in the Universal Orlando theme parks for your entertainment. But you're here for the updates, not for me to blab on about my videos. So roll the cheesy phone transition, and let's get into our first topic. Starting this off, we have two pretty big updates relating to Halloween Horror Nights. The first being Universal released new Halloween Horror Night merchandise online. It's all retro merchandise that also revealed the tagline for Halloween Horror Nights as 30 Years of Fears. We can see this as it's on the sleeve of each of the t-shirts. When the merchandise first went up, Universal had to deal with their website crashing multiple times due to the amount of people that were trying to either see or purchase it at once. The other thing that happened with the merchandise was one of the designs was misprinted. There was merchandise for the Fright Fest, Universal's first ever Horror Nights. However, the date on the search re on the shirt read 1990 when the event actually happened in 1991. All of these items are removed from the store in people's orders and it has been said correct versions of all the items will return to the store soon. If you want to buy some of this merchandise for yourself, it can be found at www.shopuniversal.com. The second update also has to do with clothing in a way, however, it is actually in the parks. Out by the extended queue for Revenge of the Mummy, some mysterious construction went up. Oh wait, never mind, they put up a facade and it literally says Tribute Store. Well, it was already speculated because that's where the Tribute Shop is every year, but whatever, the point is the facade for the Tribute Shop is up. This shop will most likely be used during the event to sell the merchandise that we saw put on the Universal Online Shop. Even though I have more Halloween Horror Nights updates, I'm going to stay away from the screens for a little bit and go take a look at the Velocicoaster. However, before I tell you all the updates for this week on the Velocicoaster, I want to correct a mistake I made in my last video. I said that the Velocicoaster top hat is the tallest thing in the park, when in fact it is estimated to be 140 feet tall and Doctor Doom's Doom Drop is 184 feet tall. Sorry for my mistake, I just read something wrong. But with all that out of the way, let's get to what's new. With last week marking the top hat being built, the track is almost done. All of this that is needed is a final curve to the brake run. These pieces most likely won't be going up soon though, as they block the path the, that is the easiest way for workers to move construction equipment in and out. Last week, I talked about how I could not tell what was happening at the bottom of the ride due to how much construction there is in one place. However, with the track almost complete, there isn't much else on the ride to give updates on. Since I missed a few weeks of updates on the, this part of the construction site, I'm just going to say everything that there is now and work from there in future weeks. So without further ado, here's everything at the bottom of the Velocicoaster. There's a framework for four rock structures that has gone up, one of which they've started to detail. Both the station and the maintenance building have been built outwards and put up some paneling on parts of the walls. The first show building is bright orange, and finally you can see some random bits of rock work dotted along the construction wall. Phew, was that a lot of stuff. How about we celebrate me almost running out of breath and passing out for a YouTube video with some crepes? Well, we actually can't yet. However, a new shop in Central Park has been set up to open soon that sells crepes. It also has the most creative name I've ever heard. It's in Central Park, and it's called, drumroll please, Central Park Crepes. Just brilliant, don't you think? Let's just hope the crepes are better than the name. However, talking about the food just reminded me of one of this week's Halloween Horror Nights updates. Scare Actor Dining has been confirmed by Universal for Halloween Horror Nights 30. However, they also posted some changes in how it will work. To take photos and just generally throughout the experience, Scare Actors will be placed six feet away from guests. There also will be no touching Scare Actors, so you can still do Scare Actor Dining, but it will be different though. However, that's not the end of what I have for Halloween Horror Nights. Universal held external, meaning for people who don't work at Universal auditions, submitted via a video where you had to stand next to a fridge and answer a few questions. Disappointingly, by the time I upload these, this video, the auditions have already ended, so if you wanted to, it is too late to audition now. So that's all that I have on Halloween Horror Nights this week, and I have no idea how to make this a clean transition to the next update, so I'm just going to start talking. Universal Orlando Annual 
pass holders will find this update useful, as next month we can start maxing out on those sweet, sweet buttons we love to collect. Not only will we be getting August's button, but we will also be getting April's never-released Frank the Pug button. It will be available at the Pass Holder Lounge and Studios, and in some place I have never heard of in Toontown. Huh, I guess even when you spend almost all your free time researching one specific theme park, you still can't learn everything about it. Well, my knowledge of the parks feels small right now. And speaking of small, what small things did I find in the parks? The Cinnabon in Port of Entry reopened this week. However, on shortened hours. They're only open from 9 to 3 p.m. If you take a quick stroll to the front of, point of Port of Entry, there are new ad boards advertising a deal where if you upgrade your ticket to an annual pass, you get three months free. The rest of my small updates is new merchandise Universal added to their line. Universal has now made a Slytherin mask, which means we just need a Hufflepuff one to complete the set of all four houses. Universal also released a new Spider-Man 2020 pin. And finally, they released a plush bear wearing their 40th anniversary t-shirt. Darn, that bear has better style than I do. Anyways, everybody, that is all that I could find this week at Universal. Thank you all for watching, and I usually say this in a pinned comment to not be obnoxious, but if you could please leave a like and maybe even subscribe, it is completely free and it helps my content out a lot. But with all of that said and done, this is Luna, signing off.